let's say you've got some very tight hamstrings. They might be contracting or contractured, but they're, they're really lighting up on you. Hamstrings typically, we say, are knee flexors. They, they bring the knee up into flexion, and they attach roughly from the ischial tuberosity, and really there's, there's about four of them, give or take. And one goes to the tibia, one goes to the fibula from that ischial tuberosity, and what they do is they bring the knee backwards and upwards like that. You say it brings the leg, the true leg. This is that true leg here. This is the thigh, just in case you're wondering. But let's say instead that leg was fixed in place. It wasn't moving, and now the hamstrings were acting in the opposite direction. Instead of pulling down here, they actually pulled up here on the pelvis. Now there's a few possibilities, a few things that could change as this happened. What we could see if we just look at a slightly more detailed sagittal view is if those hamstrings were pulling again from here to here, that pelvis would tilt backwards. The pelvis spins in essentially a transverse axis. So that's running from one side to the other. And that's on top of each hip joint. These are synovial joints, always remember. So it's relatively smooth, relatively easy to get that moving. And a pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, is easy enough for, for anything to do. We can do it in a number of different ways. And we're not talking about a huge amount. It's not going to go back here if that's impossible. But it could be a slight few degrees that it gets driven back. And so that means that we've changed the position of everything above it. There's a few other possibilities, though. It's not just a pure pelvic tilt that we would be looking at. We could get, provided we've got good sacroiliac motion, and there's not a ton there to begin with. It's just a little bit. But we could get more motion happening just on the one side, on the anonymate, that's this guy here, on the anonymate that the muscles are pulling on. Conversely, if it's all fixed, then we get, this is not moving very well, then we get full pelvic, pelvic backwards tilt, a posterior rotation, or some combination of the two is also possible. It's really up to the person in front of you. Now the real question, a better question, let's call it a better question, is why they would be contracting in this way. Why would we be having such a pull being exerted on that pelvis? And the answer is probably that the hamstrings are actually doing a job. They're doing a function. Why do we need the pelvis pulled backwards? And chances are it's because everything it's attached to or the things above it are actually falling forwards. Let's say we have someone instead who's in a state where they are standing maybe too long or bending over way too much and they tend to fall forward, they tend to come forward with their whole body. And that's inclusive of the lumbar spine, which flattens out. And that's inclusive of the thoracic spine, which tends to hitch and fold really well there, and the cervical spine, which tends to hitch and fold there, leaving it kind of flat in between those two points. They bend forward, and they put their center of gravity, the position of their entire body, much further forward. So the hamstring, even though we don't consider it a postural muscle, the hamstring starts to contract harder and harder and harder in an attempt to posteriorly rotate that pelvis to get it to come back and bring the rest of the body with it. So maybe the hamstring themselves are not the problem, and maybe it's the position of the things above it. That's, uh, that's one possibility anyways.